Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here back with another video. Today we are going to be taking a look at the best way to get the most money for selling your bike used or using this situation to upgrade your bike into maybe something, a newer model or so. Um, there's three ones I want to talk about the best in my experience. Now I've been in the bicycle industry for a long time, uh, 10 plus years. My family's on the store for a long, very long time. And uh, I've always had people either say, hey, will you buy back my used bike? Or what can I do? What's the best way of selling bikes? Do you guys buy bikes? And I've gone every which way and the best experience I will kind of let you guys know which way I've gone with I'll give you the plus and minuses for all the uh, different options and the pros and cons of each one so without further ado let's get into the three of them so to start off with uh, first and foremost everyone's gonna think of is eBay uh, eBay is definitely the place to get the biggest hits out of there it's gonna be to the biggest market there's gonna be the most people on there um, and usually it'll sell the fastest but with eBay um, but well, right now we have to consider as well when you're selling your bike or upgrading your bike uh, We all know the bicycle market's hot anything used right now. They're putting prices up. They're crazy This thing right here used pre-owned SL7 tarmac 54 for 11.5. You would not see that anywhere um, <laughs> Before this whole uh, shortage of bikes, but you know like he's got 12 washers on it I'm sure a lot of people click this link. He's probably getting a bunch of offers that are, are low ball, but it's going to be the, the, the best place to go if you want to sell it pretty quick. Um, but we'll talk about that later on. Bunch of minuses with eBay are. Uh, there are scammers on here that will send uh, try to set up uh, certain things outside of eBay that you might fall for. And maybe get uh, uh, some people say, hey, I'll send you a check for this much money, blah, blah, blah. They're scammers for one. Uh, two, eBay definitely backs the buyer more than the seller. So if this person, if you're this person selling this Tarmac SL7 and the person who buys it gets it and within 30 days they don't like it, and you're out there spending the money thinking that's a done deal and then they request a uh, trade because they're like oh i just got the bike it's not what i wanted ebay takes their side and will yank that money back from you and then you don't have a bike and it's a whole situation so there's a lot of risk in that also with ebay i don't know if you guys know this but you're not getting that 11.5 you're going to be getting fees on that you're going to get about 10 percent through ebay which is insane i don't know why it's not with trucks but like like if you sell automobiles on ebay i think it's like a hundred dollar flat fee to sell on here um on bicycles they take 10%, which is absolutely insane. So 10% of 1100 already is $1,000 um, off anything. And then you have PayPal fees, which I think is another 3%. So you're losing 13% right off the bat. So this 11.5, they think was great, plus 250 shipping. You got to take the, you got to take at least, what do you say right there? Uh, 11, uh, $1,150 right there that you're losing right off the bat by selling this thing. So uh, it's not the best in that matter because you always think this big number you put out there is reasonable because this is pretty much market value Let's say anywhere else you sell it then you lose that so that's that's a really big con is that eBay takes huge fees um, But yeah, so eBay um, It's pretty bad also Facebook marketplace you can list down there, but uh, yeah, so eBay Number one, I think you're gonna get a lot of hits you might sell pretty quickly but the only cons is that you're gonna get the fees on there and um and uh, you have to deal with uh, sellers wanting to refund for some kind of odd reason. Number two on my list is going to be in person. Uh, neighbors, friends, social people on group rides, uh, people that you've actually seen around the, the area. Uh, Craigslist that we all know and love. Um, now, here's the thing. With Craigslist, you have to consider you're going to get pretty good top dollar, especially right now um, with the bikes being so shortage. But the only thing is, is that when you sell the bike to someone local, you have to meet them at your house. Um, this is all around where I'm at. I mean, my shop's in Deerfield, so I don't really care about the area. But, but you have to meet. You have to have the person come to your house. You have to pick a time. It's inconvenience for you and him. You have to set up with a meet time. Um, you have to feel safe about the whole situation. Um, it's kind of crappy. If you don't use Craigslist or maybe even Facebook Marketplace, uh, you probably will get hit with lowball offers as well. But the only thing as well is that if you sell to a friend in a group ride. Then you have to see that person with your bike every single day. And then if a problem arises and uh, you don't feel like dealing with it, um, you know, it, it becomes the fact that once you sell a bike, you usually want to be gone with that problem and you don't want to see it. I'm not saying it's a problem, but you don't want to have to deal with it. You sell a bike into someone, a buddy in a group ride, a service, or someone around that area. You might run into them down the road and they'll be like, oh, how's the bike going? Blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, I ran to this. And then they might want to drag you into a warranty issue or maybe make their problem your problem again after you already sold it. And obviously, you don't have to feel obligated to do so. But there, that is a risky run. So, um, so benefit is you'll get cash offer. You'll, 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 you'll know it's not a scam. You can probably sell it pretty quickly. But uh, usually when you meet someone, especially a friend or something like that, you're going to want to 
that person's going to want a favor. They're going to want something in the future. Um, so keep that in mind. So, so seconds in person. The third way that is the best way, in my opinion, that I've I've really come to, to come in love with to to selling bikes used or upgrading or anything like that. Me being a store, and I wasn't even uh, I wasn't even a partner with them at first. Is now uh, Pro's Closet, and this this stuff right here, this sh this whole situation is now the easiest. No more eBay, no more Craigslist, no more selling here, no more, no more that. You literally take a picture of your bike that you have. Let's say you want to upgrade your bike. Let's say you want to just get out of the sport or whatever. Or you want to upgrade your bike into a different thing. I have people come into my store and say, hey, do you buy bad bikes? Buy back bikes. Um, I did a video on one. I did Someone bought an Athos Expert for me, a 2021. They want to upgrade. They bought the bike. They fell in love with the sport. They want to upgrade. Uh, I told them, no, I don't buy back bikes because of the fact that there's too much liability for stores to buy back bikes. As soon as we buy back a bike that's used, consumers want to give us a little bit offer because it considers it used. And they're like, I don't want to pay top dollar for that anymore. So it's just too much liability. Uh, there could be something wrong with that bike that's not that we don't see the front half of it, and then we get hit with it on the rear that maybe there's a crack or a hairline crack that we didn't notice. So I said, I can't buy back your bike, but there is a company that I can do. I'll take care of everything if you're going to buy a bike for me. The guy's like, yes. I have an Athos Expert frame there. Um, so what happened was I, I go to Pro's Closet. You can literally, excuse you, you can literally go to Pro's Closet. You have this little thing up here, sell and trade. Right here, you click that. You make an account, it takes two seconds. You send them one picture of the drive side. You send them one picture of the non-drive side. You give them the description of the bike, the serial number, everything that. They're going to give you a, uh, an offer within 24 hours, either a cash offer, a trading offer, or they'll even give you a really good offer. I think like $500, $600 more offer if you buy a bike through them. Not even advertising for Pro's Closet, but I mean, the prices are great. But um, but yeah, the, the price that they gave me for this Ethos Expert frame set Consider this, the Athos Expert and the Athos Pro frame are $3,300 no matter what. You can't buy the Expert frame, but it's $3,300. They gave this man $2,800 for his frame set, which was used. That's sometimes, in, in the market before that, that's better than what we would actually sell a frame for. I mean, we have an Athos Pro frame sitting in the back right now um, that retails for $3,300. $2,800 ain't bad at all for what that is, especially when you use so they're going to buy that back and they're going to sell it. If he was to buy a bike from them, they'd give him 3300 bucks. But here's the best part. There's no hassle for the consumer. I, as a bike shop, was willing to work with them because they're buying a bike from me. So I said, I'll box up the bike. They give the label to the, to the person. They insure that label as well, so they don't have to worry about insuring it. If the bike gets lost in shipping during that whole situation, if it's under Pro's Clause's name and they did everything, usually they'll go ahead and give you the money anyways. There's no worry about scamming. They give you an offer up front. It works amazing. As long as you're completely transparent, 100% true with the bike, uh, they give you really good deals. Pro's Closet's doing it, Bicycle Blue Book, and there's a couple other like third-party companies as well that do it. Uh, I've had the best luck with Pro's Closet. They give a hell of a deal each time I do it. Um, but this is definitely, now that I actually signed up to be a partner with the Pro's Closet for a bicycle shop, this video has nothing to do with that. Um, it's not even like a sponsor video or nothing like that. I'm just saying, in general, using it for a tool at the bike shop, I didn't want to take in trade-ins ever. So this was the absolute way to get top dollar for the bike for a consumer, secure about it. They get the money for me. I literally said the whole thing. I, all I have to do for the consumer is just have them do their driver's license and uh, sign saying that the bike is theirs. The money comes to me. I give them the check. I'm like, hey, you're going to buy a bike for me. I'll give you full money. And yeah, that's it. It was the simplest. It's the simplest process ever. No more waiting for eBay. No more like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Literally, someone says, comes in and says, hey, I want to upgrade my bike. What can you do for me? I say, give me a picture of your bike. Boom, done. I'll get you an offer right then there. You tell me if you want it. It keeps them It keeps them in mind. It keeps the offer fresh. Sometimes even me being a salesman, someone comes in and says, I want to I want to buy a bike. There's no situation where I could be like, oh, let me wait on eBay, see what happens. They might get stale. They might just keep the bike, you know, but this incentivizes the customer to buy a bike. So, um, but yeah, very cool. Check out Pro's Closet if you're looking to get out of the sport. You're looking to trade up on a bike. You're looking to, maybe you want a new Tarmac SL7, you have an SL6. Go ahead, look right here. This bike goes for $8,000. They probably gave this person $6,000 for a three-year-old bike that's used. I mean, and that's a pretty good deal. And you know it's going to be all cash. So kudos to them. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. So uh, cons to pros closet, really. Um, I can't I can't really think of anything yet. I haven't had a bad offer. Maybe once this market cools down and the bikes aren't as hot, maybe they're going to give you more depreciated values for the bikes. But cons to pros, pros closet, I'll say they really don't do cheap bikes. 
So if you have a cheap bike, the best way to go is probably uh, Facebook, consumers, or donate. But yeah, that's about it. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something on here. Hopefully this uh, maybe incentivized you guys to maybe upgrade your bikes or whatever you guys are looking for or gave you some information. Appreciate it so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.